The Liberation of Sundrian City by Andrew Lewis Chapter 4 Chances I knew it. Didn't I tell you? Look, it's Mott. Jeremy was truly flushing with glee. Linus noticed that it was indeed Mott who had came sauntering through the gate and into the pit. Andy grinned broadly. This was what he came for. This was why he loved the rest day show. Not the trials or the executions or the gristle sticks or Remy's warnings, the music or anything else. It was the elephants. Linus was truly in awe of them. He dreamt about them often, but in his dreams they were in flowing green fields and they, and when they looked in his eyes they understood him more than anyone else. In his dreams they were more human than any person in Sundrian City. Mott marched laps of the pit proudly, his solid legs pounding the earth purposefully and with a warrior-like precision. And Commander Damos watched hawk-like from the grandstand for any sign of the rider mistreating his favourite elephant. Linus recognised the rider. He had seen him once before, and although he didn't know his name, he knew his riding style and that he wasn't the best elephant rider the palace had, but was still quite capable. There were two types of public executions that would occur on the rest day, trials and straight executions. In the trials, the unarmed criminal would be forced to face a war elephant, which was ridden by a soldier armed with a short sword. If the criminal could survive until the timer was up, about five minutes, he would be set free. Only petty theft and minor misdemeanours were rewarded with the privilege of a trial, and even still it was extremely rare for a person to survive the ordeal. In fact, Linus had no memory of anyone ever surviving. Once, when Linus was much younger, he witnessed the defendant dislodge the rider from his seat atop the elephant, but he was then killed by the blade of the soldier's sword after running nearly three laps of the pit in evasion. Although there were tales told of people surviving the trial, that had been the closest thing to survival that Linus had seen. The second type, well, it was just as it seems, a brutal execution by the foot of an elephant. After the rider had ridden a few laps of the pit to the roaring of the crowd, the drums set in, signalling the beginning of the trials and quickening a thousand pulses simultaneously. This was known as the swarm. The rider directed the elephant to face squarely at the doors and then back up to the opposing wall, where it would wait patiently for the doors to open. The drummers banged a steady rhythm, thump, 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 and as the pr pounding grew louder and more intense, the horns joined in, playing a swelling monotone crescendo that pulsated in time with the drums. The swarm grew louder and louder, and as it did, so too did the crowd's anticipation, so intensely that some people couldn't help but let out shrill screams. People started to clap and stamp their feet in time with the drums, and more and more people started howling into the pit at the tops of their lungs, until just when the intensity was nearing peak, the wooden doors slid open once more and the pit utterly exploded with noise. The well-trained elephant, which had stood indifferent during the swarm, suddenly shifted into a fierce battle stance, poised to attack. A man stumbled out, dust swirling helical from his every staggered step. He looked truly terrified. When the wooden doors slapped closed behind him, he backed up to them slowly, considering his opponent. The elephant reared its head and trunk, trumpeting loudly. It began to trot toward the man, and as it did, the man did something strange. He did something that Linus hadn't seen happen before in a trial. He ran at the elephant. He ran at it, and when they collided in the middle, he slammed into its forehead with all his might. His legs were swept aside by a tusk, and he hit the ground hard, and before he could roll away, the elephant's tusk had struck down upon his head. He didn't move. The elephant took two casual and deliberate steps forward, the second of which landed directly on the criminal's head. The applause was slow to come. The crowd was shocked at the speed of the trial and its abrupt finish. Usually, even if the elephant had the criminal pinned underfoot, it would not apply pressure straight away. Usually, the rider would put on a bit of a show, taunting the criminal for a few minutes, building the crowd up before ending it to a whoop of applause. The Emperor applauded too, but there was a look of mild disappointment upon his face. He, more than anybody, enjoyed it when the rider put on a good show. 
Well, he won't be getting a promotion any time soon, said Linus, referring to the elephant rider. Two men entered the pit to haul out the body. It's not his fault. The elephant was spooked by the man attacking him like that, Jeremy replied. No, it takes a lot more than that to spook a Sundrian city war elephant, said Linus rather astutely. It was the rider who was spooked. A good rider can keep his beast in check through anything. Jeremy did not rebut. The drums started once more. The swarm rang louder and louder with thumping and hooting and men screaming like maniacs. The doors slid open and another man wandered out, this one looking just as terrified as the first, but a little more composed. He looked every bit the part of a criminal. Strong and dark, a, st a distended chest puffing heavily, a grisly face contorted by sheer rage. He looked ready to take on the beast with all he had. When the beast moved forth, the criminal sprang to the side and ran along the curved wall. The beast veered its course, trying to meet him at the wall. When it swooped the wall, it narrowly missed the man who reeled around and sprinted a few steps toward the centre of the pit before spinning again and running towards the beast's rear end. Agility was his advantage. It was clear that, unlike the first criminal, this man would take the much more common strategy and attempt to outrun the elephant until the time was up. At first the rider tried to back the elephant into the man, but quickly changed his tack and hastily tried to turn the elephant around. This brought the man a couple of seconds. The elephant was hesitant to turn. See right there, the elephant is confused. This rider really isn't all that great, Linus thought aloud. The criminal used those few seconds to sprint top speed away, back along the wall. The elephant gave chase. They ran nearly half a lap of the pit before the elephant caught up. At the last second before the elephant reached him, the man tried to make a dash for the pit's centre, and as he did so, he was tripped by the elephant's trunk and hit the dust hard. The audience applauded the rider's excellent manipulation of his animal. The man tried to scramble to his feet, only to be pushed back down by the trunk. When the elephant's foot pinned him gently to the ground, the audience responded with a fresh wave of applause. When the elephant wrapped its trunk around his forearm and dislocated his hand with a single yank, the applause grew. Still, the criminal's screams could be heard loudest of all. Remy laughed and clapped from his chair, but the emperor had left his throne and was on his feet, a ravenous grin across his face positively enthralled. A leg was crushed by a stomp. The screaming became shrill. An arm was torn off at the shoulder and cast aside. The man's screams stopped. A tusk came down upon the man's head, once, twice, thrice, then it was over. The rider peered down over the elephant's head, checking to see whether the man was still alive. The elephant backed slowly away. Tanner had indeed been correct about the ambusher being executed without trial. He and two others were brought out into the pit, their arms tied securely behind their backs by six soldiers armed with swords. Each criminal was made to kneel down in front of the solid wooden stump, which had been rolled out moments before, and place their forehead on the wood. Their crimes were read out, then Mott made his way along the three stumps, stamping once on each. It was all over quite quickly. 